You want to teach them? Huh? You want to teach them about the subpixels? Okay. I don't think so. I am so sorry that we cannot get Professor Kitty here to teach us about the subpixel, but clicking on this video, that is correct. I'm going to actually show you guys about the subpixel manipulation that we can now use in Super Mario Bros. 3. A subpixel is pretty much pixels that are smaller than a pixel. And uh, without making things too complicated, essentially my subpixel value based on my position is constantly changing. So as you can see on screen here, we have this nice little tool uh, to help us practice. And what I'm going to go and do is I'm going to go straight to World 7. We all know about this world. We all know about 7-1. But what this practice tool actually allows us to do is track our subpixel values. If you look at the coin count, you can see that it says zero. But if I just lightly tap on the D-pad, my direction, look at that. I didn't even move. Did you see that? Mario didn't even move, but the value changed from zero to four. That is a visual representation of what my subpixels are. I didn't even move, and it went up by four. Let's try again. A little quick little move here. There you go. I moved a little bit. It wrapped all the way around to back the two. You might be saying, well, what do you mean it wrapped around? So if I lightly tap, I can get the subpixel value to go all the way up to 15. Light, light tap, light tap, light tap. 15, there you go. As high as it goes, then it loops back to zero. Boom. But subpixel value changes so much that the lightest tap can change it a couple numbers. You see how much it's cycling? Just by these little presses. And you know I'm pressing lightly because Mario's like not even moving, right? So weird. Um, and I am actually blessed. Uh, there's somebody in the speedrunning community named Louie. Um, some of you might have heard of him. And he created uh, this tool to allow us to actually see. Now, this helps so much because if we have the correct subpixel value, that means we can clip into the wall. Right? And everyone knows the famous 7-1 clip. It's the run breaker. Sometimes, even if you do the manipulation, you can still not get... It's... 7-1's a nightmare. When you start a fresh game... Uh, your subpixel value is originally and always starts default at zero. So as you can see, when I go to world seven, it would be just like I started a brand new game. You can see the value is zero, okay? One big important piece of information is that from what I've been told is that my value anywhere between zero and six, if it's that number, when I hit this wall, the wall will say, yeah, you can clip. That's a pretty much anything above six to 15, the, the wall the wall will reject you, it won't let you in. And what I mean by the wall is the line dividing the two bricks in between the wall. Pretty much where I'm shooting is that I have to clip into that wall, j just like a wall jump. It's the exact same as a wall jump. I have, my feet have to touch the line, and because there's a ceiling here, and I'm Big Mario, whenever I'm ducking and my feet touch that line, I'm gonna stand up and my head's gonna be stuck in the ceiling and it's gonna execute the method that they implemented in the game so you don't get stuck. And I'm gonna walk through the wall. That's like clipping 101. You might be asking, okay, well look, look at the fluctuation right now in the subpixels. How do you keep track of that? Okay, how do you how do you keep track of the subpixels? How does this help you? Okay. When I'm in the overworld, my subpixels aren't changing. They only change whenever I have control of Mario within a level. So as you can see, my subpixels are still eight. What if you beat the previous level with a good subpixel value? And that is exactly what we're looking for. That's exactly what we want to do. We want to beat this airship, which is before 7-1. We want to beat it with a good subpixel value. The manipulation doesn't take place until we do the boss battle, okay? So we, we have a little bit of time. There's no way I'd let you guys watch the auto scroller. There's no way. All right, so now I'm gonna save state as I enter the pipe. My subpixels could be anything, right? We're gonna kill the boss. Okay, and now I'm gonna save state one more time, okay? So this is the very interesting part about manipulating my subpixels, right? As you can see, they're fluctuating, and when I grab the wand, boom, it stops, right? My subpixels are moving. This is my locked subpixel. Now, naturally, two would be very good, right? Obviously, below six, but I would never actually know that. But here is the trick to the manipulation of the subpixel. When I kill the boss, if I stand under the wand and I move Mario one pixel, not one frame, not two frames, not half of a pixel, one pixel, that will be the perfect amount of subpixel rotation to always land me on a number between zero and six. So let's go ahead and give it a try. As you can see, I moved one pixel, I landed on a two. Let's try it again. I landed on a one. 
Let's try it again. We'll stand under the wand, move one pixel. There you go. Boom. Now, you can see I wasn't moving, but my subpixel value was changing there, and that was because I was tapping very lightly and moving my subpixel value. Just because I have the correct subpixel value doesn't mean that I am going to physically execute the trick properly. I still have to do a very crisp duck jump. We'll create a safe state outside the level so I can demonstrate it to you. Because if I had the bad subpixel value, it would never let me in. But if I, had so let me stop myself right there. I messed up my duck jump and the whole thing, everything about it. I didn't even get a chance because I ran up against this wall. 7-1 is so finicky with that. Like even if I do everything right, I'll still make a mistake. So we'll load up the level. We're on the exact same everything. This would be just like if I was in a run. And we'll try it again. We'll try and get the clip. Okay, the clip didn't work. Now, here's what's interesting about the subpixels as well. If this subpixel truly didn't work, I will never be able to get into the wall. So a good way to test is keep loading this same spot with the same subpixel. And if I get in the wall like I just did, that means that this this subpixel, it will always let me in the wall. I just have to position myself properly. All right, let's, let's try it a couple times. Correct subpixel, easy. Messed up my messed up my movement. You see, it's very vital that you don't mess this up when you get it right. So I so I keep getting it, and that's because of the manipulation that we do. Now for everyone out there, ah, uh, Mitch, I don't believe you. you're just talking about a bunch of crap. All right, let's try it with a different clip then. Let's try it with let's try it with a completely different setup and see if it works. So one good spot is we can clip in seven six, right? So if we do the fortress. Let's see if we can set up our subpixel when we kill the boom boom, right before we grab the orb, right? And that's some of the beauty of it. We can actually, you know, kind of set up our position while the boom boom's exploding. So let's create a save state. Again, my subpixels could be anything. So we're gonna damage him, and we're gonna take a hit. Save state, stomp, move one pixel. Subpixel value of two. It's below zero, but we'll see if this works. We'll see if I can get in the wall. Now hold on just a minute there. You might be saying, well, this didn't work. You didn't get in the wall. Did you notice how my head got stuck in the ceiling and I couldn't move forward anymore? Yes, another stupid thing about the clips. It just makes the clips even worse. So let's keep trying again with the same sub pixel. As you can see, the sub pixel manipulation is a very very nice thing to have and I'm glad I was able to share it with you guys and I'm glad that you guys were able to you know finally get a chance to look and see exactly what I'm doing are you able to do this subpixel manipulation for every clip I would say yes but you have to find the right place to use them there you have it guys the subpixel manipulation finally explained you guys now know what the heck I'm talking about and how it applies to my run and now you can finally you know visualize how the subpixels are constantly changing there's so many times where I used to go to a stream or ask someone, well, what are subpixels? How are they changing? And, you know, I couldn't really visualize what it actually meant. I mean, now that we can see the numbers, it doesn't seem too complicated, right? It's, it's almost like, how did we not figure this out before? But, you know, I'm, I'm glad we figured it out now, and I'm glad we have the ability to manipulate the subpixels. So, I really hope you guys enjoyed, and have yourself a good day. Whee!